said. Yeah, well, you, you're, you're close enough. The Lord, what well, depends on on what translation. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is also long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay. So we got, we, we, you have, uh, no, we have nothing really on that. While the ark was being prepared, that is, eight souls were brought safely through water. Now these eight souls, that's Noah and his family, right? Right. These eight souls, that's Noah and his family, right? Right. I think you would agree with me. It's the ark that saved Noah and his family. And the water was being used as an instrument of judgment on all of humanity. Yeah, what you don't want to do with the Bible, say it. You want to put twist on it, like First Peter three twenty one. Listen to this guy; he's talking about the water is the judgment on the eight souls that were saved. No, they were saved by water, and he puts a twist on Peter. What he's saying when it says baptism saves us, because see, so, yeah, he would. Okay, they were brought safely. Through water, do you do you uh, have any objection on changing this to any kind of interpretation that it wouldn't say exactly what it says right here? Sure, I, I actually want to ask you a question. It's, this is not a controversial point, but do you mind to read the King James version after it says eight persons? I just want I want to illustrate something why I think being familiar with different translations is important. Yeah. But two things are always preeminent, even over different translations. you got to understand more of the Greek definition of terms to adjudicate what the English is talking about. And context will always inform you how those words are being used. But is that okay uh, to read the King James Version? Yeah, I got it up here. Quick? We're in few. Okay. That is, eight souls were saved by water. So the, the word you want to look at is by or through, right? Sure. Now, hear me. I'm saying the King James is fine, and the ESV is any word-for-word -word translation is fine. But I do think this text is harder to understand because of how the King James is rendering. It's saying that they are literally being saved by water. That's where the ESV kind of qualifies a little bit more. The We're brought safely through water. But they're saying the same thing. I just wanted to point that out. That's the that's the Greek word. Uh, D-I, I guess, is how you say it. D-I. Sure. By, through, okay. Do you think one translation, though, like really pushes something then one translation doesn't? Is that kind of what I'm getting? No, I'm saying the King James is a good translation. How you can understand saved by water yeah. is really known. Of the Bible, no. Noah. This is Noah. Noah is in the Hall of Fame because he listened to God. God created the whole universe. He created the sun and moon and stars, the sky above and the sea below. God created the animals and the people. Over time, the people on earth began to do bad things because they didn't listen to God. Over time, the people on earth began to do bad things because they didn't listen to God. Uh, uh, did you want me to read verse 12 too? Uh, I would love it. I mean, I think all of it kind of shows the depravity of man, how there's actually no one who seeks after God. And yet, you you know, your fundamental principle was you, you got to search after God if you want to understand the truth. Okay, it says, they are all gone out of the way. Now, the Bible says they have gone out of the way. You say they, have, they were born out of the way, right? I, I would say that man loves his sin and is in utter rebellion against God, according to Romans chapter 1. Well, I have no problem with saying that mankind can, can become very evil and wicked. We see that in Genesis. But the difference is, too, with original sin is do you believe that we are guilty, condemned for it? Over time, the people on earth began to do bad things because they didn't listen to God. I would, I would say 100%. Because of our nature, we're born children of wrath. We love sin. And so we are earning a wage for ourselves, which Paul later says is going to be death, that eternal separation from God. 
I would I would say 100% because of our nature, we're born children of wrath. We love sin, and so we are earning a wage for ourselves, which Paul later says is going to be death, that eternal separation from God. So how do we become righteous as far as... There was only one man in all the earth who was different because he listened to God. That man was Noah. So God told Noah to build an ark. He told Noah exactly how to build the ark, and it was to be the biggest boat ever built. God told Noah to build an ark for his family and the animals to live on during the flood. When the ark was ready, God told Noah to load everyone into the large boat. They entered in pairs, each with another of its kind. After seven days, it started to rain. The underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and then stopped. Many days later, Noah sent out a dove to erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and then stopped. Many days later, Noah sent out a dove to find dry land, but the dove came back. After seven days, Noah sent out the dove again, and it returned with a branch. After seven more days, Noah released the dove again. This time, it did not return. This made Noah think the dove found dry land where it could rest. Noah lifted the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Noah trusted in God's plan, and God protected his family during the flood. Now, the flood had come and gone, and Noah, his family, and all of the animals walked on land again. Noah built an altar and sacrificed burnt offerings to the Lord. When the story of Noah to, to understand that he's really being saved through water or in spite of the water, because I think you would agree with me, it's the ark that saved Noah and his family, and the water was being used as an instrument of judgment on all of humanity. Do you think the, do you also think how, how this say, how it says, though, it says, eight souls were saved by water. It doesn't say eight souls were saved by the ark. Right. That's why I think if you understand, like, and I'm not saying you don't understand the story. I'm saying, but if people understand the story that God was about to bring judgment on the whole world and God saved Noah who had an obedient faith. You'll never hear me, you know, have a problem with saying an obedient faith, but he was saved by the ark. That's what was salvific in that story. Okay. I think you would agree with me at, at that point. Like, to me, I'm not trying to be, you know, shifty or anything. There. Yeah, but let me ask you some questions about that. Would the ark have done any good if it didn't have no water? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It would have floated up without water? No, but Noah would have demonstrated his faith if God told him to build an ark, regardless if there was water or not. Okay. Well, who, who's, we all know who sent the water, right? Yep. So we could say that God saved Noah by sending the water so he was saved. He was saved by water. I, I probably would just disagree at this point, not to be contrary, regardless if there was water or not. Okay. Well, who, who, we all know who sent the water, right? Yep. So we could say that God saved Noah by sending the water, so he was saved, he was saved by water. I, I probably would just disagree at this point, not to be contrary. Yeah. But I, the way that I understand the story is the water was not.